Today I'm making the Wixton Howry and I'll be making this as a gift for my mom. So I'm lengthening it about six inches and I'm doing the small size and I'll be using the large pocket and I'm making it unlined, which isn't how the pattern comes. So it's a much simpler way to sew it. I'll be doing French seams and I'll be using a contrast fabric for the shawl collar. Since this fabric has kind of a a subtle stripe about it. You can kind of see that the flowers kind of line up. I'm going to look at if I need to match those rows up or if it's you know, I can get away with not doing that. So it's quite a large pattern and I'm going to speedily cut through this. There's a front and a back on the fold, two sleeves, and then collar pieces and pocket pieces. And I'm going to make up my own robe sash, which I'm gonna cut at about five inches wide by I think it's about 30 inches long. I uh, look on the screen, <laughs> I'll confirm that. And I'm gonna cut two of those and seam them at the center back and then attach the row and, and add some little loops to the side seam at the waist so that she can use it as a robe. Um, and let's see, one last thing I wanted to note is that I'm only gonna be cutting one of the collar pattern pieces, but I'm gonna be cutting four of them. This isn't a traditional style collar where you need a top collar and an under collar. So I don't really think that that extra little bit shaved off is going to help me on such a large pattern piece. I can probably um, get around using it and it'll just simplify the cutting process because there's so there, these are pieces are so much longer. So if you're lengthening your robe or your howry or whatever you're doing, make sure you add to that pattern piece because it does sew down the center front and has um, it lines up with the hem. I've actually added Swedish tracing paper to my pieces because I'm really nervous that I'll forget to add this extra length that I want. Uh, while my mom is really petite, she did want to make sure that it was kind of like a lightweight robe that she could throw on during the warmer months here. All right, let's get to it.
Okay, we're ready to sew the Wixton, and I'm going to start with hemming these pockets here. And um, just a note, if you want to speed up the sewing, you can change the speed of this video uh, by clicking, I think it's the three little dots or the little gear, and then you can, you'll see speed and you can change it. Um, you'll still be able to understand me too if I'm talking, and you can always adjust the speed as you go. Uh, there is hopefully some timestamps in the description and you can click on it to just jump right to the spot that you want to do. So um, like I said, I'm going to do some uh, French seams and I am going to just hem this pocket. It was supposed to be lined. So I just pressed it under uh, a little under an inch and then a quarter inch for the hem. And we're going to hem it and attach it. Sometimes with hems like this, I actually like to stitch them from the right side because the stitching on the top sometimes looks nicer than the bobbin. Now, if you like, you can press around the three sides to get a nice crisp edge. It's nice and even. I've got my pins to mark my pockets. Just make sure that um, you don't put this on upside down because it's kind of hard to see that this is the top of the garment. It's easy for me because my fabric is a one-way print, but this little curve right here is indicating the armhole. So then you'll know that that's where you want that to be the top right there. So I'm gonna center this on my pins here. It's a pretty narrow front. I just like to pin right in the middle. It's obviously going to be a little shorter since I added the hem allowance. And I start upside down so that I can put a little triangle box at the top to reinforce that opening since it's going to be a high stress area. I'm going to turn it under about a half inch. I think the seam allowance to sew it together with the lining was 3 8 I'm going a little rogue on this pattern. So I like putting that pockets on first because it's a lot easier to manage your garment when you have less to hold. So now we're going to do our shoulder seams. Put these wrong sides together. Remember when you're lining things up like this at the neckline that you're lining it up on the seam line. And when you're doing fringe seams, it could be a little tricky because really the seam line is like right about here. And um, when you're um, sewing it together, we're gonna sew it first and then we're going to press it and then we're going to sew it again. So you want this cut edge along the neckline to still line up as you go. So it is a little deceptive on where that seam line is and where you're gonna be sewing it. Cause you kinda have to look ahead at what the finished seam will be.
right now we're going to do the sleeves this uh, the way this sleeve pattern is you don't have to set it in so we're going to attach it first there's no left and right of this sleeve so that makes it a little easier too so but you do need that center notch and you're going to line it up with that shoulder seam and press your shoulder seam towards the back and we're going to do this wrong sides together it's obviously really hard for me to tell the wrong side of this fabric. Remember this right here where this little nip is like meaning this corner was cut off right of the pattern piece right here. So this right here is the spot where the seam line is going to line up like that. So I'm going to start my French seam with that lined up like that. Wrong sides together. I'm quadruple checking. <laughs> and line up the notch to the seam and press the seam towards the back. Make sure this is my back it is. The other side. Have a little bit of a cutting boo-boo here so I'm just gonna work around it that's right here this can come off right here um, I've got a little slice in there but since this is my actual seam line I might miss that slice maybe I'll just slide this up a tiny bit just to make sure that this little slice right here which was already a cut on the fabric is below where the seam line will be so we'll just move it up a little bit more and we'll just be aware of that it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, back is this piece now. Pressing my seam towards that. All right, so let's press it. All right, now we should be, you know, lining up on that where that little tail or tag of a uh, fabric is that that should line up right there now and then because that lined up look at that the seam the raw edge there of that underarm lines up perfectly let's get rid of these threads right here I'm always scared to pull those threads right there because you never know if it'll um, make a run in the fabric. You can see my rotary knife blade wasn't that sharp. I couldn't find the one that uh, was the sharpest when I was cutting out this project. <laughs> I kept looking for it. I think this is the one. Yep, this is the one with the little funky... Um, piece cut out of it so let's see if we can work around that so there's that so I just want to make sure I enclose it like that and so that cuts in there and that seam allowance it's barely in there you know I'm not too worried about it because there's not going to be any pressure on that and then this right here will all get caught in a seam allowance of the underarm all right which we're going to do now Alright, so wrong sides together. I'm going to press my seam allowances of the sleeve towards the sleeve and try and line up those seams. And then I'm going to stack them right on top of each other. If your uh, fabrics are really, really thick, I don't think there's any issue 
with pushing one one direction and one the other direction. This is a really lightweight. Sometimes with your French seams, you need to trim them down. You have a better chance of them look, keeping nice and tidy and, and looking nice and not uh, letting any of those threads poke out of the finished seam. I haven't been doing that because I've been using a seam allowance that works, but it certainly could have benefited from that, especially where I didn't cut very straight or along this edge, you know. So... trim this a little bit. I actually like doing this on a table with a rotary knife when it's really big long seams like this. It's a little easier sometimes. Just depends on the fabric. Okay. Let's do the other side. All these little threads in the seam allowance. Some grain lines also can be threadier, so you can tell that the length grain um, gives us more of these little fraying threads than the cross grain does. I've definitely used that to my advantage before, especially on specific projects. Cut things out on a certain grain line just because of that so I don't have to fight it as much, as long as it doesn't isn't really critical. I, did, I got a little chunk there, but that'll be okay because that's going in the seam allowance. I won't try and smooth it out anymore. I might make it worse. There we go. Kind of trimming this down. Okay, so let's uh, press that side seam. Try and get those seams stacked one on top of the other best you can. They're a little trickier. You could spend some time making sure that they're stacked. I can feel my uh, pocket under there. That's okay. The other side. So after this step, we will have our hems and the neck band, which is most likely why you're here, and the uh, belt that I added. Doing a seam like this, you just really want to make sure you're not pulling this top layer and letting it creep because then you'll get torque lines in your seam allowance. 
we don't like torque lines, but it also would make your underarm seam, your your actually your armhole seam, not line up. It makes it a little trickier. cute okay so now we're going to work on the neckband I'm just doing this white since I didn't have enough of the print and I you saw I cut this these pieces of bias here I'm gonna make a hanging loop for the back of the neck so she can hang it up on stuff can I even tell the right side? I think it's right wide. Let's sew this. I just got this one and three eighths inch wide. One and a half inch wide would work. Anything you feel comfortable turning right side out. It, it could be a piece of ribbon. It could be twill tape. It doesn't have to be on the bias. Uh, that's just my um, habit to do that. And I made the others for belt loops. All right, so I'm gonna use this loop turner. You can do whatever you like. A safety pin will work. And let's press this. All right put a chopstick in there just to kind of uh, fluff it up and kind of get that seam to behave. Sometimes if I can't get that seam to stay on the edge, I mean ideally I would love it down the center, but because this is on the bias, this edge right here is going to be a little bit stretchier and less um, constrained, whereas this edge with the seam is going to be much further, much more um, constrained. So it's going to be really hard for me to kind of bend this to my will, especially with the seam allowance kind of filling it up in there. So this works just fine. And um, we're going to put this on the neck right now since I do not want to forget. Okay, so I have my center notch there. And we'll do this on the inside. I don't have much seam allowance on my little label. So I'm just gonna kind of put that a little lower. Let's see if I can maybe put this in here too. I'm not sure. Maybe a little too much. Maybe just underneath. Or like this. Something like that. How about we'll try that? Okay, let's stitch this to this right here. This is kind of good. This is a little bit pokey because of there's so many colors in this label, and this will soften it a little bit. stitch this down good because I can already see it's unraveling and um, I don't like that <laughs> can also stitch these by um, placing it right sides to the fabric like that uh, it just gets tricky to do the other side and because it's already unraveling a little bit, I'm not going to play with fire. 
just gonna stitch it down. Well, there's not much there. Do this side here. If uh, I thought this was a synthetic, I would probably melt the edges at the very least. It's kind of a split decision to use it. One I hopefully don't regret. Let's see here. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. That's what you see on the outside, though. So we gotta pick your battles. I don't really like that. I'll probably clean this up later. Clean that up later. All right, so let's put the loop here. And I'm gonna cut straight across. Do something like this. Maybe I'll go like this. Hmm. I'll stitch this down. Now I know my folds are opposite of each other because see this one is folding across the top. So if I were to mirror it, it would be like this. I don't know why, but for some reason, maybe this one will work. We'll see. I find that it doesn't really lay very flat and one will look funky. It'll sometimes bubble right here. You probably can't see it because this fabric's so busy. Um, this also kind of helps hold it down and no one ever notices. It doesn't bug me. So I fold one one way and one the other way. So I'm going to stitch all the way across because it'll kind of fix it in place. The loop is the most important part. Who cares about the label? <laughs> so there we go. It's a huge loop, but don't you hate when you have to find the loop? <laughs> so why not go big? Okay, so now we're going to work on our um, neck band. All right, so we're gonna sew the center. So if you have your under collar and your top collar, sew your two under collars together at the short center back seam and sew your under collar lining at the same thing. Um, if you needed to interface it, go for it. Go do your interfacing. I'm not gonna do that because this fabric is slightly heavier than the print. And I'm actually not quite sure this came out, so we're gonna do a half inch. Do this one now. Yes, my collars are all for the same. I feel pretty confident that I can navigate any issues because I didn't do top and under collar. And you saw that I had some weird funky cut chunk out of it right there. So we're already navigating stuff. So, all right, I'm going to open this up. And I think I'm going to press one seam one way and one the other rather than pressing it open. Like this and then we're going to press the other one the other way, but it actually doesn't work out that way. So if I press this one like this and then turn it upside down, you can go either way. So you can, you can just press this any Anyway, you're going to be able to, to put it together with the seam staggered. All right. 
So now I'm gonna sew the long edge together. And then now my seams are kind of staggered. Get my seam allowance here, pushed out of the way. I don't really like that uneven edge, so I'm just gonna line it up at the shorter edge. What I'm doing is kind of just assembling the frame of this collar, and I'm gonna work out any weird stuff at the ironing board. All right, so I'm gonna sew this half inch seam. It might be 3 8 so I apologize if I'm doing that wrong. I'm not too worried about it, it's a really big collar. I have two of these, and so I, I do know this one. I'm going for mostly straight. <laughs> straight is my goal. And I definitely did not cut this straight. So we'll try and uh, smooth out some of this rough stuff with the machine and the iron. This is just a, a cotton poplin, or maybe it's a batiste that I buy from Hearts Fabric. I use it all the time as lining and interfacing. I interfaced the belt with this that we haven't sewn yet. It's really versatile. I really like how lightweight it is, but it's still um, sturdy enough for interfacing. So even though I had some pretty chunky rough edges, you can see like, I don't know if you can see this cause it's so bright white. I'm just smoothing it out with the sewing machine. All right, and so yeah, this doesn't line up either even though we cut all four together. All right, so let's trim this up and um, I'm going to trim that edge right there so it doesn't show through and iron it. And then I'm going to kind of hold it up to the edge of this and see where I'm at lengthwise. Okay, so we have our neck band collar um, pressed and ready to go. I don't have my um, short ends done yet, but I'm gonna do that right now. And you may find that you need to adjust those. So you don't wanna get any torquing, which is like the diagonal drag lines. And that's when um, these two edges, right now, you know, they're nice and flat, one on top of the other, right, directly across. but it, when you go to sew this in, what'll happen is sometimes they'll shift like this, you know, creating these drag lines. So what I like to do is just make sure things are kind of stable. And sometimes you can do that by just like, okay, I'm gonna pin this so that this can't move anywhere, you know, and just be aware of it. So I'm going to sew across the end here. And I made sure, like I went to the table and I used my rotary knife, trimmed along the edge, made sure this was all parallel from the seam line to the raw edge. And then I trimmed off the ends as well. So I'm just gonna sew a shorter seam allowance here so that I have some room to play with if I need to make it bigger or, or longer, longer or shorter. Once I go to sew it in. All right, so let's trim corner here. Get a nice point, the best way you like to do. And then press it. 
and we'll do the other side as well. Another reason why I like doing this narrower seam down here is if I did this at the half inch seam line or whatever it is, and I nipped my corner off, if I needed to make this longer, the seam here longer, like the whole neckband, I would have this angle of cut off fabric. Right now, I don't really want this to get any smaller, so I'm gonna try and make it work no matter what. Chances are it's gonna be fine. But if I needed this to be longer, I don't have any room here to go longer, but I can actually go shorter and I can still cut my corner off. So that's the reason I like starting shorter rather than going longer. And just make sure you have, you know, back stitches around this little corner that you're turning. Reinforce it. Okay, so now I'm gonna press these two ends real quick. All right, so in the instructions, of the instructions have you fold up this edge when you go to sew this seam right here. And you can do that if you like, but I find that it's more flexible if you leave this alone because you kind of be surprised that you might fluctuate a little bit and that fold might kind of get away from you. Now, one of the things I do like is I'm pretty sure the instructions sew this the same way I would. So I'm gonna start from the wrong side of the garment. Oh, we need to hem this. We actually need to hem this. Sorry about that. Let's hem this. Okay, so I have prepared my hems and I'm going to fill the hem up with the fabric. So in other words, I turned it the same amount that I'm turning it up. And I feel like that kind of prevents wrinkling when you launder it. That way it's just solid fabric in there and it makes the hem a little more sturdy and crisp. If you don't have a free arm on your machine and you need to do these really tight circumferences like this, uh, you should do it with the garment right side out and the you're sewing on the inside. That way it's not, the garment isn't underneath your sewing. It doesn't kind of slip under. This makes it a lot easier. All right, trim the threads. All right, and so for the center front, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your center fronts are the same length when the hem is complete. So if you sew the lined version, you have a seam right here and you can still adjust it before we add the neckband, but you can't adjust it once the neckband's on. And granted a robe of like this nature, because it doesn't have a defined neckline at the center front neck, it's more of a swoop that kind of goes around the neck because there's no hard edge right here at the shoulder line. So see, there's, it's a continuous straight line from the shoulder seam down. There's no neck line scoop. It's not as crucial. So if you get it off a little bit, nobody's probably gonna know except you, but now's the time to check if you really want your center fronts to be the exact same length as one another. I can see this wants to fold up like this a little bit, so I'm gonna let it do that. Probably means that I'm preventing some torquing. It's probably just how it was cut and where the cross grain is there, how true to the cross grain it is in parallel. I can iron that out right there. All right, now we are ready to put our neck band on. We're gonna start from the wrong side of the robe. And you're gonna start with your lining side first. So whichever one your lining side is, you're going to start with that against the Actually, I am wrong. It depends on what you want. So um, I've done this with a contrast under collar so that when I wore it like this, 
This was the contrast right here. And when I wore it, you saw the top fabric here. And you could see my contrast fabric peeking out. So it just depends. Just remember that this edge that we're sewing on first on the inside of the garment is going to be the part that folds over and shows to the world. So this piece right here is your under collar. So you're going to put your top collar edge to the neckline. And what I like to do with these really long, long, long pieces like this is start at the center back. And so I'm going to start the center back. And what I like to do actually is I'm going to sew. And so remember that torquing issue I was talking about earlier? If you really want to prevent the torquing, you could put a few notches along the way. You know, it doesn't matter where because you're just matching these notches up to itself. So you could pin it, you know, pin this, pin this all these thicknesses together, uh, you know, like up to, you know, a couple inches away from that edge. Or you could do this. And then that way you have these little hallmarks, you know, these kind of guides. Let's put a few in here. Doesn't matter where or how often, just give yourself a few. And make sure you're putting them right on top of one another, you know. All right, and so now let's start with the center back neck. Line it up to the seam. And I'm just going to go down one side. I just find it a little better and, and ensuring success rather than starting and going from hem to hem. I like to start and go from the center back down and then do the same on the other side. I suggest trimming your seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch as well. It makes these curves a little better. A little easier to navigate and lay spout flatter. Put all your threads and raw edges towards the raw edge. Make sure you're not pulling anything. And now we have this really long seam, so let's kind of see where we're at here. Let's line this up. Do I have a lot extra? Do I have a little extra? Looks like I'm close. All right, cool. Now I start getting close to the end. I'm going to see, does my hem line up with this seam line? No, so I have some extra fabric there, which is great. Better than it being short. Remember, I, you know, lengthened my neckband because I lengthened my robe. But I didn't line my robe. I used a hem allowance. So that kind of um, also changes things. I could have done all this and calculated it to begin with, but I kind of knew I would have enough as long as I gave myself room. All right, so we'll get down here. Okay, so while this is flat here, let's just trim this off. I'd give myself a seam allowance. Make sure this is nice and flat. Give myself a seam allowance. And I'm going to reinforce this corner, so I'm going to start here. to go right to, I'll probably make that a little wider, right to this edge here. Let's make this a little straighter. Let's trim this down a little bit.
And now we're set to where our center front lines up with our collar, just like that. All right, let's do the other side. Start the center back. And same thing. Pivot a little bit. And now we're getting to that nice long straight edge. Make sure I'm keeping some of these little threads to the raw edge. And we know our neck band is probably too long. This is why often I actually don't sew this seam first. Get this nice and flat. And we'll re-sew this. Make sure we reinforce this corner since we cut off its back stitch. All right. There we go. Clip the corner. Turn it right side out. Ooh, let's get rid of these threads here. All right, so now the fun step. Because we started from the inside of the garment and we're finishing on the outside, we know it'll look nice. Now, on this particular garment, you can start either direction because there's kind of an argument to be made that this seam will be the seam that everybody sees rather than the, the other one. But it just depends on how you're feeling about it. So I'm, I started the way I started. So now we're going to press all of this. We're gonna press the seam allowance into the neckline and we're gonna press under this edge to go just past that stitch line there. And that's why I don't pre-press this because sometimes you'll find that you need this much seam allowance and this much seam allowance, no matter how hard we try. So as long as you've set yourself up really well, you shouldn't have any issues. So yeah, so make sure this edge was already pressed. Get a nice and flat, flat line up all of your little notches to one another like this. And those are kind of your landmarks. And we're gonna pin this, press it, and sew it, and we're done.
Okay, so we're all pinned and ready to go. You can see that I lined up all my notches, pinned those spots, then I pinned in between. I kind of just made it into manageable chunks using those landmarks. All right, so we're gonna go through. And I find that when you're starting with things like this little edge here, pulling it, like over correcting it towards you sometimes is better, especially towards the end. At the beginning, it's not as crucial, but you just don't want it to get pushed the other way. All right, let's do this. So just make sure your fold goes just past that stitch line. And if it doesn't, you can come back and fix it. I can already see since I was kind of fussing there, I, I got a little bit further away, so we'll kind of I like to use an awl to kind of hold that fold there. I have a double pin here because I noticed I lost a stitch there, so I just want to make sure I catch it all in there. So my presser foot here, it's split down the middle and some have a, you know, a barrier across the front. Like they're, they're closed right here with a slot to thread your, um, put your thread through. And I like those better because what happens with mine is my fabric will pinch between that slot sometimes. So I have to be kind of careful. You kind of just know what your machine gives you grief, grief over <laughs> for each thing. So now I'm into this curve here of the neckline and I clipped the neckline, but I did not clip the neckband. You can if you're having a lot of trouble, but I do find that clipping the neckband can be a little bit tricky to wrangle as you're sewing. Get this little back stitch thread out of here. It's gonna be hard to kind of hide that one. Now we're at the center back, we're halfway. So you can see I have a little extra fabric here and that's okay, we're gonna, it'll be just fine. little point here as long as my needle staying to the right of this original stitching we know we're stitching on the neckband and we don't have to land on the neckband all the time since a lot of this edge is going to be um, on the inside of the garment Almost done. I'm kind of pulling it a little bit, making sure I don't get any torque lines. When I see I have a little bubble like right here, I can kind of Hold gently and then kind of use my awl to kind of ease it in there. All right, towards the end here, because I folded this one back, see it didn't line up perfectly. This is why I don't really like pre-folding the edge. Each um, way to do this has its advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so let's take all the pins out, check it over. It's looking pretty good. So 
So now we're gonna stitch the stitch lines in this. And so I recommend either chalking this or pinning it. You could even uh, put some pins in in the lines, iron those pins as long as you can iron them and then remove the pins and you'll see all your little holes. And I think that's a great way to do it. If you have a guide from your presser foot, you can put that at varying widths and that'll help as well. So I'm gonna do the perimeter edge stitch first. I'm kind of smoothing this like this, kind of making sure all of this is still flat. I'm not as concerned about torquing right now, but I also don't want to encourage any because we're still going to quilt this collar. So normally when I would have attached this, I would have actually on this stitch here, I would have started at the center back neck gone down one side, come uh, come down one side, go across the bottom, do this edge stitch, and then end at the center back neck again. I don't know why I didn't think about doing it this time. That way you don't have any back stitches right here because on certain fabrics they don't look good. All right, so it's the inside of our collar. Looks pretty good. It's almost all on here. I could have stitched further in and it would have been on there. But like I said, you know, this is against the neck. And, you know, you're going to fold this down like this. This is the edge that shows more because it's going to peek out. That's the side that's against you. Okay, next we're going to add the quilt lines on this collar. So if you have a, a little guide that can clamp onto the edge of your presser foot and lets you do uh, parallel lines, I highly recommend doing that. I think it's the easiest way. You don't have to do any marking or anything. Just pick the width you want and just, you know, keep your little guide lined up with the uh, previous line and you'll have your spacing really well. So now you can measure across this. You know, mine's about six inches apart. So you're, you're going to want to do it so that it, each section is in, you know, an equal amount. You can also maybe pin some lines in here. Iron the pins as long as you can iron those. Don't touch the caps, the heads of the pins if you can't. And then remove the pins and you'll see some lines. That can help. Um, you know, there's also chalk and things like that you can do. Um, sometimes you can just tape it on your machine. So, you know, like if I want these and I'm getting beyond that guide, I can just keep putting a piece of tape and lining up this edge to it and then stitching, you know, so if I want that three quarter inch spacing. So, and I think that's what I'll do is three quarters because that is divisible for six inches because two of them would be three inches, but this kind of thing can get kind of tricky. You're not actually looking for the number of stitch lines. You're looking for the number of spaces between the stitch lines. You have to consider these two of your stitch lines. So what you can do also is fold this in half like this and then fold that in half and see, is that what I want or do I want maybe two more? You know, so that's what I would do. So if I do mine about one inch apart, that would give me a very easy way to keep all of the spaces between my stitching nice and parallel. All right, so let's do that. So I'm keeping this on my one inch line there. I've done this before and I know that it is really tricky to get these parallel lines. I'm going to tell you right now that you won't ever look at it again. Like I don't, I don't ever look at that on the, either of those garments. I've done it twice and I know one of them got pretty off. I remember that now, now that I'm doing this, I remember that. So don't, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. If you have a print, it won't even show up. So you're also worried about torquing it at this point. So you just try and keep everything nice and flat.
Okay, I'll try and get these nice clean back tack there. I think that's what I'll do is just make some tape lines here and that will help me stay on track. When you're sewing something like this, I liken this always to mountain biking. You want to look where you want to go rather than where your needle is. And so um, usually you'd be looking ahead at whatever you're about to sew, not where your needle is because it's too late. And you're, it's just like when you're mountain biking and there's a hole in front, you don't look at the hole because you'll, you'll just kind of naturally steer toward it. So you want to steer towards what you're aiming for. And so you have to look away from the hole. And so, um, and I, I know this firsthand. And so what um, I like to do is I stare over here. I'm actually looking at this spot right here to keep my straight line. That's what I'm aiming for. It feels a little weird, but it really is not a big deal. You can do it. Just make sure everything's out of the way and you don't have any extra layers kind of sneaking under your needle. You can feel everything too, so I don't think you have anything to worry about. sort of wishing I would have interfaced this or put another layer of this fabric. I do think all these stitch lines are going to help give it body. I just didn't want it to be really stiff. Okay, I've run out of bobbin, of course. Oh, I have a little bit of a tuck here. It's kind of a bummer. Should have thought about that. Let's try and ease it in here. And I'll be more conscious about that the next time on the next pass. Let's get rid of our stitching here. Our threads. All right. Let's go to our next piece of tape. Get rid of this stitching here. Our thread. All right. So we're on this one now. Like I said, I'm looking at that little spot right there. All right, so I don't wanna get that bubble again, so I'm gonna kinda of prepare this a little better this time. Pull a little bit, ease it in there. You're starting to get a little bit, you know, your fabric, you're really trying, you're really starting to see if you kept your fabric nice and flat over here. You might be running into some issues. Just do your best, try and ease it all in. If you used fusible interfacing only on one collar, you're probably running into a little bit of a, um, you know, constriction. One fabric might be a little bit less um, stretchy than the other. one more and then we have the belt we're done okay so let's put this piece of tape one more right here that's about all i need but maybe more importantly instead of following that tape i'm going to try and keep it uh, in the middle of these two that'll be less obvious if it's off than if I have one fat one and one narrow one. So we'll just try and we'll try that out. It's a little easier to do. Hopefully it visually looks okay. You can see that little section there is a little narrower than the others. 
right down to the bubble which I've pretty much gotten rid of now which is great all right I don't mean to let my needle go off the edge like that I'm just being a little overzealous <laughs> I like to usually stop like at this stitch line right here rather than going a stitch past it would look nicer all right so, so this is nice it'll give it some sort of moldability you know gives it some structure I think that helps a lot okay so next we're going to add our ties for our belt and we're gonna add our belt let's look at all our threads here I always clip on my threads as I go so that I don't have to worry that I missed any at the very end and your friend is holding their creation and you notice that you um, missed a thread <laughs> All right, so we have our belt, and here's our little belt loops. So let's make these. Again, I just use a piece of bias. It doesn't have to be bias. It could be ribbon. It could be twill tape. Um, this isn't in the instructions. You could even add a tie that goes from the one edge of the center front and one that comes from the inside side seam, and that they meet on the inside of the the garment to hold it closed. Okay, so I've pressed my waist ties. I still haven't checked the length or anything yet. And um, I I have the, the two layers of fabric for here. So this is my interfacing, which is just a fabric and the outer fabric. And what I did was I pressed it wrong sides together because I know this extra layer of fabric is going to be too big to fit inside here if it's cut exactly the same. So I'm just trying to prevent that from having like a wrinkle down the middle. So I pressed it the way it's gonna end up like this and now I'm gonna sew it together. So I think uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew all this to the center back. I'm gonna sew this right sides together. Cross that short edge. And I'm going to press this open. I think I'm going to stitch it down and keep it nice and flat. Depending on your fabric, you may not want to do this. And so now I'm going to sew it right sides together and I'm going to leave a little opening back here so I can turn it right side out but I'm going to match up the seam here perfectly and I'm not going to put the opening at the center back because uh, sometimes that makes it kind of get off a little bit so I'm going to sew it along the long edge and down this point
Okay, so we pressed our belt. And um, now I am going to stitch around it and I'm going to attach it to the row. That's why I marked the center back uh, in line with where I'm gonna put the waist ties. And I didn't put the waist, um, well, the belt loops, honestly, the belt loops in the side seams because I can adjust their height just in case they're too low or too high. And then if the pocket interferes, I can also move the pocket. So let's just stitch, I'm gonna stitch around the perimeter. You could hand sew this shut, but I'm gonna stitch around the perimeter just to give it even more sturdiness and body and then also prevent it from ever needing ironing. That's my hope. <laughs> Let's stitch this down. Center back here. And I think it could be more precise than I am about making sure you get this nice and straight. So I'm gonna use where I've marked the belt loops over here as kind of my guide as well. Let's see if this here. I love the way this belt feels. I'm really glad I lined it and stitched it. Feels really sturdy but soft still. Okay, so all right. Got that. All right, so I'm just going to stitch a box, you know, back here. Just a little bit. If she wants the belt removable, we can do that. All this is changeable. Go well, three inches. Okay, now I'm going to do the belt loops. So let's see. I could do something kind of creative to where I could kind of hide that raw edge, you know, um, maybe stitch it down like this. Um, Maybe I just want this stitched one direction. It's kind of hard to tell what I want here. I think what I'm gonna do is just stitch it down. Maybe on the back side seam here. And then pull it forward like this. Hmm. I think honestly it should go more like this. Maybe I'll do the other one like that and I'll fix this one. It's kind of an experiment. So maybe instead I want this to be more like this. In here. Okay. 
That was the one pin in my stash that wasn't magnetic. Even though I don't even use a magnetic pin holder, I do have a magnet on top of my machine. I'd throw a couple there. Let's see what we like better. Do we like it going like this? Yeah, I think we do. I think that looks nice. And keeping it loose lets the waist belt be able to adjust a little bit more. So I think I'll take this one out over here and uh, turn it. Let's see how we like this one. Because yeah, I feel like this one's going against it. Yeah, so we'll take this one out. Right. It's kind of unexpected. I kind of like that little discovery. So now our belt loop can go through just like this. All right. All right, let's see what she looks like. All right, well, this has been a sew through, kind of different than what I usually do on the Wixton Howry and online version. I have two other videos like this. Well, two other sew throughs of this project. You can look at my website, sewso.live, and you can find the notes on each of those, an unlined and a lined um, Howry by Wixton. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, support me in any way you can. Check out the live streams and join us sometime. It's a great group. Thanks. Bye.